if you remember my first week, um, one of my classes was tiny. It was only like four, three students and a teacher in like a very small room. So it's quite an intimate environment. And then the, and then bell rang or whatever, class is done. And as I'm getting up to leave, it ended up just being me and the teacher. And she'd been, she'd been teaching at Cambridge for 25 years. That's crazy. And I think she's been to Durham in between and whatever. So she's seen that. She she's seen it all in it. And I said to her, What one piece of advice would you give me? Mm. And she said, Don't get too attached to this place. Um and I just that, that's such a profound piece of advice, especially in your first week in it where there's nothing really to get attached to. Mm. Is that recorded? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is it flashing red? Yeah, it is flashing. Yeah, this Wicked. one is recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get started, mate. <laughs> Let's get started. Finally, bro. That was a long setup. Bro, that was a long setup. <laughs> We're getting back into the swing of things, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. A bit rusty, a bit rusty. A bit rusty, a bit rusty. <laughs> so, like, man, bro, what you telling me, man? We've been, we've had a hiatus. A little bit of a hiatus, but we're back. We're back we're for back. good. We're back, man. We're back. We're, I remember me and you talking about this in the summer. We're like, listen, man, final year. We've yeah. got to go hard, did it? 100%. <laughs> but then things like coronavirus come, you obviously can't plan for them kind of stuff, in it. So mm. we're trying to be as creative with finding solutions to unplanned problems as we can. Exactly, exactly. So, um, but yeah, I'm excited. Like you said, final year. Yeah. But, um, last opportunity to really have this much freedom yeah. together in the same space um and yeah man i just we just we we love what we do right like it's yeah. last year was so fun and yeah. um i think you just mentioned before we started the recording that we're so happy that we did it yeah. do you know what i mean like it, w- it could have been so easy for us not to do it but but like yeah yeah it's, it's, it's great I think, we did it. yeah the thing you mentioned about like we enjoy this yeah i think one of the main reasons is we're capturing something that we just think is a good thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. reconnect with friends or connect with new friends mm. and just have a space that kind of just holds us just to have our combo. Mm. And I think what this, what the podcast did is it forced or encouraged us to make sure we do that weekly. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. And like, it's one of them things that if you don't put time mm. into your day for that it will just won't happen sure. you know them i'll shout you later and whatnot in it and we kind of i think that's what that's why i was just so sick doing it and that's why we just want to keep doing it as well obviously because of what's going on around the world it's difficult to get people in but we're here together and yeah. we can have our episodes yeah um and we we want to continue the reflection session season yeah yeah, yeah. um so i don't know like before we even get into that like yeah Shall we talk to the people about our name change? Because yeah. they're just, I mean, they're going to see our oh, name yeah, change and they're true. not really going to know the, I don't know, the, the thought process that went behind that. I remember you rang me up, yeah, <laughs> randomly out of view, and you're like, bro, one of the principles that we try and, that we've increasingly tried to do is say what we do on the tin. Did I say that right? Do you say that right? Do what the do what we say on the tin. What's what's the saying? What's the original saying? Oh my god. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Uh lovely, lovely present from Suleiman from Turkey. <laughs> Come on, shout out to Istanbul boys. <laughs> it wanted to make an appearance, didn't it? It couldn't it couldn't resist. It's too bro. good, it it resist. Just to be on camera. We'll just leave that there for now. Yeah, it? perfect. Um it does what it says on the tin. Yeah, so basically I remember it was at an event, um, and a friend of ours, Ismail, was like what do you guys do? But this was for another project. This was for, it was for a startup. We'd been working with another friend of ours, Zachariah. And he's like, what do you guys do? And then we were kind of like, uh. <laughs> do you have and a moment? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I remember him saying, you need to be able to tell me what you do in a sentence. Yeah. Because otherwise you can't convey your message in an efficient way. Mm. And that's a, that's a red flag, isn't it? So I think from that little exchange we kind of took that on to what we do after work after work i feel like yeah it was a it was a calm name but i think the new name is what we do in it mm. we speak to people and we kind of allow them to present themselves to the world i don't know does that sound too grand yeah that sounds a bit formal yeah but i know but I, obviously i know what you mean yeah we just it's a chance for people to get to know them basically yeah, exactly basically yeah, yeah. yeah. And meet them virtually. Exactly, exactly. Hopefully in person one day. Yeah. (laughs) And I think one of the things, one of the main things was like we do we do one thing and we want to try and 
do that thing better and better and better mm-hmm. as opposed to we do like five six things and we can't we're not really doing any of them fully because yeah. like when we started <laughs> <remember>? <laughs> i was gonna say it <laughs> when we started it was bad <laughs> like we thought that this would be like a platform to do three four different offshoot things yeah that like we wanted to vlog our time at cambridge we wanted to uh, use this as a platform to start um, like some tech startup yeah and we wanted to interview people as well yeah i think we were just doing too much yeah 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 doing too much yeah, yeah. and i think one of the things when you're doing so many things kind of like you become unclear mm-hmm. like and i think when you have other things to do yeah mm-hmm. if it's not clear in your mind what exactly you need to do like monday from nine to twelve whatever yeah what is it i'm actually doing things just become really difficult yeah. and for me one of the biggest things is just mental fatigue like when you just don't really know what you're doing you kind of don't know what's going to happen in this three hour period that i have on this wednesday evening yeah. if it's not clear in your head then yeah. it's just a bit long in it do you know what this reminds me of this reminds me of our like one of our last meetings with sodan talk oh, yeah. <laughs> and like Saladin was just so focused yeah, on everybody knowing what their role or like what everyone knowing what they had to do in preparation for an event like everyone needed to know what they had to do. You know what I mean? Because some often the times we like we leave a meeting not really knowing what we have to do next, yeah. and there's just a bit of ambiguity there, and it's just a bit jarring. But um, but yeah, like knowing what you have to do just makes everything way more efficient. And yeah, yeah, successful. I remember, yeah, because me and Rahab had a conversation, so I, I'll probably guilty of being able to leave con- um, meetings and kind of not really. And I think that was kind of what we did last year, right? Yeah. Um, like at times people weren't really sure and I remember I have saying like one of the things she noticed is that it was kind of just up in the air or what everyone's on so yeah it's definitely a way a way to improve things isn't it yeah it's interesting to see how it overlaps in different parts of your life yeah it's just man. it's a principle right that's just yeah just a way, a way to do things yeah and I think starting projects is is one way to like uncover those yeah, or 100%. sharpen and refine those principles. Hundred percent brings us brings us right back to where we where we started with the combo, which is we're glad we started. But yeah, name change, name change. Anything else to mention before we kick kick it get started? Not really. No nah, man, just good to be back. That's yeah. what I want to say. Yeah, good to be back and expect a lot from us this year because we're we we're both very much on the same page in terms of how much we want to invest in this project yeah um and give it give it our all yeah 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 100 percent. and um yeah and we will be keen to hear what you think with regards to everything you've heard and any suggestions or reflections you have on them like first impressions yeah oh yeah because that's the first time you met him in it so what did oh what yeah was that like for you now he's a very impressive guy. Yeah. Like he's, I don't want to, I don't like to you know, speak too highly of someone when they're not here, and just it's just, I mean, it's not always the best thing to do. But like, yeah, I'm very happy to have met him. He, um, he super articulate, um, and he really knows how to. He really knows how to. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He really knows how to uh, narrate a story. Mm. I think that's something I always find that impressive. When yeah. someone, when people know how to narrate stories in a really um, engaging way, like I, I just, uh, I admire them so much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just, t- I took so, mu- so much away from the conversation that I even, like, obviously in preparation for this podcast episode, made a few notes um, to, to, to make sure I was staying on track in terms of the reflections. But yeah, in summary, amazing guy. Uh, yeah. Took a lot away from the conversation, and we definitely need to get a part two, hundred yeah, percent in the me. future. One thing about Sarklain is, for me, he's got like the, some medieval level <laughs> of honor. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember this. I don't know if I told you the story of where he, I, I invite. You know, on Facebook you can just invite people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like send invites to an event. Yeah. Mm. So a friend of mine was having an event. It was. It happened to be in Cambridge. Yeah. So. I just sent sent it to friends or whatever, and um, one of the invites was to him on Facebook, and he ended up coming to Cambridge to to the event. I w- I didn't I wasn't Cambridge that day. I was happy to be in London, so even though I was sending the invites, I didn't even I wasn't at the event myself in it. Mm. And he turned up, and then he was like, and then the, and then someone asked him like, how come you're here or like what brings you to Cambridge. And he goes, um, yeah, Saladin invited me. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I always honor my invitations. And that's something he said at the at the podcast day as well. And I just found that so profound. Like this is, he's, yeah, I just thought that was amazing. 
Yeah. Um, and I remember when he came as well, he was like very generous. Um, gave us some dates afterwards. Yeah, trust cause me. Because it was just before Ramadan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, man, he's, he's, yeah, integrity is one word that comes to mind when, it, when, when I hear Sakhalin's name, but. Yeah. It reminds me of this saying that it's easier to hold on to your principles 100% of the time rather than 99% of the time. Yeah. Do you, you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he seems to be someone that, that kind of has that um, yeah, integrity, yeah. like you say. But um, I'm sure he wouldn't want us to be <laughs> chatting so highly of him, like, yo, yeah, without him being here. Yeah. But let's go straight into the convo, man. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. have something that you want to talk about today? Yeah, so one of the, so w- when I was listening back to it, one thing that was rang in my head was when he was talking about his time at uni mm-hmm. and how much the friends and the people he met at uni changed who he thought he was or who he was. I remember him saying, I came into university with a lot of insecurities. You know, and even people like, for example, Rahma and Asif and the people I've met at KCO, for example, yeah, massively pivotal, man. I feel like I came into university with a lot of insecurities. Um, to this day, I hold myself to a very high standard, which can be good. But what those my friends have been really good at is just reassuring me that, you know what, you are doing enough. You are making a difference in the few things that you're doing and that, you know, for me, it's like whenever I have a space at at, at the table, I just feel like I, I get massive imposter syndrome. You know, H- like luckily right now I don't have it. But whenever I'm in a meeting, whenever I get the opportunity to, 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 to speak on a platform, I'm like, I should not be doing this. I'm occupying a platform. So they've played a massive role in that. And, you know, I can t- I, I, I see them, you know, playing a role in the in the rest of my life. And yeah, that for me, that's like an ongoing theme for a lot of our conversations, this idea of like, you like when you enter a space like university the biggest thing is the people you meet and this who you were before you came and who you are once you leave and throughout and in between that is just so much recalibration of what you think the world is Mm. and it's like every time you meet someone or you go to a thing or whatever whatever happens or an experience it's kind of like okay you're kind of like adjusting your focus on the world and like what what your priorities are and all of these kind of things and for me that's that's like how it what that's what when he said that what it made me think about let me ask you a question because that's a very interesting topic so insecurity (laughs) 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 i promise to tell the truth um so on that topic what would you say what i mean what, cause, yeah, I think I, I think I know what you're going to say because yeah. we've had this conversation many times, but I think it'd be interesting for the listeners to hear. Yeah. I remember this. I remember you telling me about the advice that you were given. Um, I remember you telling me about the advice you were given from a teacher or a professor when you first came to Cambridge oh, yeah. about not holding this place. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I I'm talking about. Yeah. So how do you think that shaped your insecurities or yeah. impacted your perceptions? Yeah, so the st- so the story that I'm t- talking about is when in my literally, I think it was my first week, um, one of my classes was tiny. It was only like four, three students and a teacher in like a very small room. So it's quite an intimate environment. And then the, and then bell rang or whatever. Class is done. And as I'm getting up to leave, it ended up just being me and the teacher. And she'd been she'd been teaching at Cambridge for 25 years. That's crazy. And I think she's been to Durham in between and whatever. So she's seen that. She, she's seen it all, in it? And I said to her, what one piece of advice would you give me? Mm. And she said, don't get too attached to this place. Um, and I just, that, that's such a profound piece of advice, especially in your first week, in it, where there's nothing really to get attached to. Mm. So I suppose in that moment, you kind of think, yeah, what are we talking about? Like, there's, it's, not even, it's not that deep, in it? And of course having come to uni older as well, you always feel like as well, I mean, there's nothing really to get attached. Like, do you get me? Like, it's not it's not as special or new because a lot of my friends had been through uni or what, like in my final years or whatever. And so I'd heard a lot of uni stories as well. So I think there's like maybe a sense of arrogance or like this isn't new to me either kind of thing, innit? But yeah, little, little did I know. <laughs> but I think, yeah, for me, that kind of, having that just in my head throughout the, throughout the, almost three years now yeah it's been um it's shaped like a lot of the ways i've interacted with cambridge or have tried to like position things Mm. here um 
what did it change? Like, that in terms of that piece of advice and how did it change? Uh, I don't know. First of all, you, like, did you what insecurities did you have? Yeah. When coming to Cambridge, if any. Uh, yeah, I definitely had insecurities. I don't know. I don't know if insecurities is the right word. To be fair, um, what was like the main thing that I just? I remember thinking this doesn't I directly answer your question, but I remember thinking like when I was speaking to my good friends or whatever before coming here, I was like, Look, I'm not even gonna think anything about it. I'm not gonna think it's sick or it's dead. Is what it is. Like if there's lit people there, it's cool. If there's people who I don't really speak to, I don't mind in it. Like I'm going there, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have some image of what uni is gonna be like based on things. You get me? So I remember that being the case, um, and I think because of that. It was it was always okay because I didn't have a big expectation of, of where it was gonna be like, or I, I made sure I didn't build up some some big expectation of, of what uni was gonna be like. I don't know. Would you say that was the same for you? I think I came into university a lot more a lot more naive or a bit less mature than you. Um, I think for me it was very easy to build up some grand narrative of Cambridge, and um, I I feel like I somewhat. Even today, if I'm being honest, like I kind of fall into that trap sometimes, where you, for a lot of people, it's like when you go on Wikipedia and you see that they, so, someone um, who's achieved a lot in their career, um, came to this university, you kind of, you kind of end up, um, trying to, I don't know, you, you, you kind of end up, I don't know, it can be very easy to view Cambridge as just like a fast track to, <laughs> to success or to um, an amazing achievement down the road. But um, I remember you, you. I remember you telling me about this experience you had with the, with the professor in your first lesson. Yeah. And um, slowly and slowly, that message I feel like has resonated with me more and more. And it when I, when a first year student came to Jesus this year and asked me for a piece of advice, I relayed the same mm. piece of advice to him. Because I think it's a very it's a very healthy attitude to have. Yeah. To to be able to just tread lightly through this world. Do yeah, you know what I mean? 100%. Like having some having a sense of detachment from from things that are s- temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Temporary. This is yeah. This is like so this made me think about two things. First thing is that I know that going through from institution to institution. Yeah. Mm. I feel like like school, sixth form, or six college, uni. Every everything you do is framed in like I'm a student. If someone, if you met someone at a thing and they go, "What do you do?" You say, "I'm a student," in it. And so I think the response to that question, like, "What do you do?" is something we're asked a lot, and in a sense, it feeds into who, who, we, how we view ourselves, in it. And I think that's one of the one of the big things about being at Cambridge is that, like, because it's also such a brand, you're identity even more gets intimately tied to to that brand Mm. and i think that's one of the reasons it's it's more likely you'll get attached to it because it's almost like it's not just a place it becomes who you are so it's like you go to cambridge boom like this brand and i think it's, it's not just a unique thing to cambridge same thing with oxford same thing with these Ivy Leagues where it's like, because of there's this no romantic narrative, yeah. it's like, not only are you a student, you're a student there, and that's who you are, and that's the response to a lot of questions. Mm. And it's difficult to not be attached because once you leave that place, there's almost a vacuum of who you are now because you're not ex-student anymore. You have to go and actually figure out these other things and i think if you don't do that while you're at uni it, it does kind of make it more difficult to do it once you leave yeah I and i know. feel like being an ex-graduate you can only be satisfied with that <laughs> identity for so long <laughs> so looking back at the conversation with sark lane one of the things that really stood out to me was there's a f- there's, there's there's so many things i can mention but um, let's start with what he said at the end. So when you asked him, who do you want to become? He said, first thing he said is, he first thing he said is who he doesn't want to become. He said, I don't, I'm, I'm happy to not be the face or the, the public. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm happy to not be the face of a movement that is driving social change. I'm happy to not be the quote unquote leader in the public. 
He said, I'm happy to be the grey man. I don't see myself being someone that is put on a massive platform and is being the visible leader of any type of movement or anything like that. What I see myself as is someone who is consistent in contributing to whatever causes I'm involved with. Like, I'm happy to be the grey man. Um, and I think if I keep my intentions in check and I don't let things get to my head because the reality is, guys, come on, like things get to your head when you're doing things right. I just want to be someone who is having an impact. And that really stood out to me because I don't think, I don't know, I think, I don't know, first of all, it's, it's just not, it just challenges a lot of people's um, kind of underlying assumptions about I think it's just a natural instinct in the world that we live in to want to to want to have credit for the things that you do um, and to want to not not necessarily have external validation to a large extent but just to make sure that if you just to ensure that if you do something it's recognized not even necessarily celebrated just recognized and that someone else can't take credit for the work that you do whereas he kind of wasn't really too interested in that he just wanted to know to himself, that he was contributing to something that was greater than himself. Um, and um, yeah, I just think it's really powerful. I think it's really powerful. And as a history student, it makes me think about all of the grey men and grey women in history that were just as influential as Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X, but just didn't get the public stage and the public platform. And to what extent did they do that purposefully? Mm. Wow. I think that's really interesting. Wow. I that's think that's really, really interesting. interesting. So a question I have for you based mm. off that mm. is <laughs> who are some grey men and women mm. in your life that you've kind of seen that are always showing up but try not to kind of be in the limelight? Is there anyone that comes to mind? Yeah. I don't... I, well, one thing, one way I've like thought about that is like people that do a lot and don't necessarily, in my eyes, get the. I don't know if the credit they deserve it might subvert your question and kind of exactly what you're not, what you exactly what you don't mean. But in my eyes, I just think, wow, I'm like you are doing a madness and like you should be more celebrated. But at the same time, what your question makes me think about is like, well, no people like celeb being celebrated and whatever being recognized is not that deep for a lot of people um such is like their commitment to what they're doing and them actually wanting to see things better change whatever so well yeah one of them is my teacher one of my teachers my english teacher donna uh donna free and i've always said to her like fam you need to you need to write a book you need to you need to be famous. Like, I always say to that, I don't know how you're not famous. You're getting, but I always say that you're getting bumped, you know. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. She's like, fam, she's different. Like, she came into uh, my school, or she's like, she was already at my school, my, my secondary, and she just helped so many people differently because she was like a very laid back teacher. Comes from the ends, um, has like her own story. There's someone I wanted to bring yeah, on a podcast. We'll definitely actually, bring yeah. on one day, hopefully. Um, and so, and she's gone to basically. It was difficult to to to, to summarize what she does, but she, and she goes to like run down like bad schools in in bad areas basically, and she just kind of co connects with the kids there, on a level, that, it just, it just opens your eyes to the possibility of what education can be like, um and like what's what the school space can be like. Mm. And it was like, bro, I remember students would go chill with her for lunch. So like she in her classroom, yeah, she would have maybe like seven kids just chilling with her at lunch. And like these were, you'd get like the bad kid and then you have the good kid and they're just all in her class. You get me? Mm. So it was like, it was mad, bro. I remember. <laughs> I used to go to her English class, yeah. Her English class was, so one of her English classes was the bottom set for English, yeah. And I was the set, just one above that. So I used to be, <laughs> I used to go into a class here. Yeah, she did like revision classes, and I, I had to, I got sent to do that thing in it. So I used to go to a class, and I used to flex, bro. <laughs> I used to go, but like in a, bro, for me it's just buddy in it. But 
anyway, I'll go to. I'll be like, Miss, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this. I've like, done this. This is easy. This is easy. <laughs> She'll be like, Fam, shut up, man. Like, this, like not everyone's done yeah, it, whatever. Yeah. Like, you don't even know it, bro. I didn't know nothing <laughs> in it, but I just. Be, uh, that's how I used to move. I remember one time she caught me yeah, writing the words, and it was copied and pasted blatant. I can't remember what the word is yet. It was like vivid or something. You know, like a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you can't tell what it means just based off reading yeah. it. So she's like, what does vivid mean? I made up something. <laughs> <laughs> I made up something. But I'm the type of guy in school, yeah. If if like this happened a couple of times, but like if a teacher goes, No, that's what it means, I'll fight, I'll be like, Yes, it is, that is what it means, isn't it? But I'm not convinced myself that's what it means. So and I don't even care about the word anymore. I'll be like, No, what, what it is what it means. So it's like, bro, they know what it means, isn't it? But yeah, so she's yeah, she's just different, man. Like Yeah. She's um vice principal now. So she like she's gone up. So she she was working in the beginning like behavior management, you yeah. know, like, and then she's gone all the way up to vice principal. So in a sense, like she is getting recognized. But yeah, that that's yeah, that's the one person that pops to mind. She sounds like a coalition builder, bro. She sounds like um, a real diplomat in the in in the school. Or yeah, someone that brings people together. Yeah, and um, one something that came to mind when you were speaking was. The, the question of being able to connect with people, being able to connect with young people that are just so disillusioned and don't care. Yeah. Young people who don't care. Yeah. Because it reminds me of something we spoke about recently about, because you, you've visited schools, like you visited your old school yeah. and you, t- and uh, um, through my work at Team Upside, we're starting to visit schools as well. And I remember you telling me in Nando's with Zakaria, um, don't have high expectations when you go to these schools. Like, your speech, your conversation with a young person is not necessarily going to lead them to start making drastic changes in their lives. A lot of these young people are quite entrenched in their view of the world. I mean, it's very, very unlikely for you to be able to make them interested, make them care, because I mean, they're just so used to not caring. It's just something they're just so used to. But in the way you describe Donna, She's someone that's unique. Yeah. She's someone that's able to make them care or able to kind of be sincere in her communication. Yeah. So what I don't know, about, is there anything we can learn from her? Because I haven't had the chance to really get to know her. Is there anything oh, we could learn from her? In I just remember some one event. Yeah, it was at UCL. And it, so she was on the panel. There was my sociology supervisor from Cambridge. Yeah, no he way. was on the same panel, wasn't it? That's crazy. Um, and I remember after he was like let me get Donna's um, details so I can bring her down to Cambridge and do some stuff in it I remember being like yes Donna you get scouted <laughs> um, yeah one thing bro I don't know like she's just herself and she's like the room she will just control the room in it but not in like a domineering way she like the room everything just gravitates towards her in the room um, I remember at that UCL event bro she tore it up it was on I think it was on colorism I think it was on colorism. I think it was. But she, bro, a room full of, yeah, because it was in collaboration with EMY UK, yeah. So a room full of m- majority Eritrean Muslim young women. Majority, yeah. And she's not Eritrean Muslim young women, in it. But she ran, like, everyone wanted to, like, chat to her more, blah, blah, blah. Like, everyone was like, she's just so sick. And that's another example of just her being able to connect. Mm. Um, and I think you can only do that when your integrity is is because I think integrity translates everywhere. So regardless of where you're from, your background, whatever, it, I think people, just human beings, they can immediately understand when integrity is is present, and that always hits. So that's I suppose that's one thing in it. Like, what does what does integrity mean? The donor you meet in a classroom is the same one you meet at an event. Mm. Is the same one you meet when you're in trouble. Is the same one you meet when you're doing well. Like consistency, consistency without effort. Do you want to say any last words about the episode, or just yeah, just I don't know. Do you have any final reflections, final comments? I would just say, if you enjoyed this, share it with a friend that you think might like it as well. Mm hit us up let us know your thoughts on this episode this kind of format that we're doing for the for the next couple of episodes and let us know what you think yeah man 100 percent. 
let's leave it there. Shout out Sackley, that was an amazing episode. Big up Sackley, man. Hopefully we'll get you back here soon.